Doctor, one of your other books mm -hmm. uh, is Reversing Diabetes. We're talking about type 2 diabetes. Correct. Probably one of, if not the most talked about health concerns, I think, right now in the country. How did we get to this point? Let's start with that. Real simple. Obesity epidemic. Mm -hmm. Diabetes epidemic follows the obesity epidemic. And so as the waistline goes, the blood sugar will go. And so, again, one of the big things we find that in men, first thing I do is I get their waist measurement in a man less than 40 inches, but it has to be around the umbilicus or navel or belly button and got to include the love handles. We got to get the waistline mm -hmm. down. And uh, there's a few key things, but that's one of the most important. And then we have to put them on the right diet, okay? And again, it, we avoid sugar. We also avoid most wheat and cornstarch. Now you're saying, why on earth would you take a patient's off wheat? Well, we find that wheat contains mainly two starches. One is amylopectin A. 75% of wheat is amylopectin A. That's wheat crackers, that's wheat, that's wheat cereal, that's pasta, that's bagels, that's pretzels, that's anything with wheat. Now the problem with amylopectin and the other 25% is amylose, which is in beans primarily, which is a good starch. Low glycemic index, fine. The amylopectin A, however, rises, raises that blood sugar very rapidly for two hours and it crashes, but it spikes that blood sugar, which causes a tremendous amount of insulin secretion. And then it gets you stuck in high insulin levels, which eventually leads to type prediabetes, then mm -hmm. type two or insulin resistance, uh, prediabetes, type two diabetes. It's real simple. So we find that when we cut out our wheat products, our sugar products, as well as our cornstarch, and I, again, I put them on anti-inflammatory diet. Mm -hmm. The anti-inflammatory diet is the key because if we can decrease inflammation, we can generally um, keep the blood sugars controlled. And then also what we do is we put them on a good exercise program. Exercise is very important, but here's the key. We want to build up the large muscle groups, the thighs, uh, the buttocks, the back. We find by increasing the large muscle groups, it literally sucks sugar out of the bloodstream, lowers the blood sugar beautifully, mm -hmm. and we combine them with aerobic exercise. It's important to do both the aerobic and the anaerobic or the weightlifting exercise to build the muscle up. The other thing we do is we balance the hormones. We find most pre-diabetics and diabetics have low hormones uh, in men, low testosterone. We check a total and free testosterone. We simply bring it up to normal using transdermal creams, rarely use injections, or we can use pellet therapy, testosterone pellets. And we also balance the other hormones, the DHEA, pregnenolone, because those are generally low too. Mm -hmm. And then in women, we usually, it's their, the one that really affects them is the estrogen. We find their estradiol levels low. We simply balance their estradiol and we also balance their um, progesterone with it. And we find many of these women pre-diabetic actually have too much testosterone, so we don't want to give them that. Mm -hmm. Because what's interesting, high testosterone in women causes, we see more belly fat. The more belly fat they have, the more testosterone women make. The more belly fat a man has, the more estradiol he makes, which is really unusual, and mm -hmm. the more C-reactive protein or, that both of them make, which is highly inflammatory, associated with heart disease and strokes and cancer and all these other diseases. So that's simply what we do. And then we put them on a few key supplements that are very simple that, that really lower that blood sugar after they eat. See, it's the sugar spikes after people eat that really does the damage. And, and what happens when that sugar spikes up 200, 300, they, we get what we call glucotoxicity, where the high sugar actually damages the beta cells of the pancreas, which secrete insulin. So that once those beta cells uh, diminish and or die, and there's less than 50% of those uh, beta cells available, the body cannot simply produce enough insulin. They're stuck in type 2 diabetes the rest of their life, but it usually takes about 10 years or longer for that to form. Mm. So we've reversed so many type 2 diabetics simply with this simple program. It works. It works amazing. And um, again, the few key supplements, we'll use some green coffee bean extract, and we'll use some cinnamon extract, as well as some soluble fiber. And wow, that just, like, for example, when, let's say a diabetic eats a piece of bread. That sugar will spike usually uh, 70 to 120 points high, higher. So in other words, if their blood sugar is around 120, it'll go up to 190 to 240 after eating one to two slices of bread. Non-diabetic, it'll spike 40 to 80 points, see. So what we found is we have to control that spike. And the way to control that spike is, is eliminate the foods that trigger the spike. Well, so does white rice. That's why I go through the book, what foods trigger white rice, potato, instant potatoes, but especially the wheat, even whole wheat. And this mm -hmm. is the thing most people don't understand. 
whole wheat still has the amylopectin A. Even sprouted breads will do it, like Ezekiel bread, sprouted breads, which a lot of people don't understand. But it's because of that starch that's in the wheat, the amylopectin A spikes the sugar, which mm -hmm. spikes the insulin, which gets them stuck in insulin resistance, prediabetes, diabetes. So again, we work on the waistline, we get the waist down, we get the weight off of them, we put them on the anti-inflammatory diet, we exercise them both aerobic as well as um, building the muscles with anaerobic exercise. And then once we get them really in shape, I switch them over to a high intensity interval training. And what that does, it really expands the muscles, hypertrophies the muscles and shrinks the waist. It's amazing how that shrinks the waist better than most anything else. And then just a few key supplements, we balance the hormones and boom, reverse the type two diabetes. It's real simple. Mm -hmm. And if somebody has type 2 diabetes or is close to getting there, mm -hmm. the long-term effects of that, I mean, why mm -hmm. should somebody want to reverse that? I mean, what's, what's down the road <laughs> well, if they don't turn around? Well, well, first of all, four to five times higher risk of heart attack and stroke. Also, much higher risk of cancer, much higher risk of dying early, much higher risk of developing kidney disease, uh, peripheral vascular disease, diabetic retinopathy, diabetic neuropathy, Alzheimer's disease. It's just like they've signed up for every major disease and it's coming at them at warp speed. Mm -hmm. So again, they should, but again, the other thing I tell women, women with diabetes, hey, it makes you age faster. When a person has diabetes, uh, the, what happens is the sugar combines with the protein and creates an advanced glycation end product. These products are, cause 50 times more free radical formation. And what, the, what happens is they literally, they, they, they affect every organ in the body, every tissue. And they, they're irreversible once they form. They age the body very rapidly. They can't be broken down. And so it literally, uh, these organs get um, inundated with these toxic chemicals that are formed from the sugar. And it starts to slowly uh, damage and degenerate organs, the skin starts to wrinkle and age and sag at warp speed. And that's why I tell my women, hey, and they, it wakes them up. Are you, you mean I'm aging fast with it? I gotta reverse this now. And the men, I say, hey, you're going toward you know, erectile dysfunction. You, it's just a matter of time, a few years, you'll have it. It'll be here, but you will not be able to resurrect it. It'll be gone, that's it. So I get their attention. And so I found the hot buttons for men. We talk about erectile dysfunction and we, we you know, also talk about the disease in women. We tell them, hey, they're aging at warp speed and we get their attention.